All right, here we go with example number two. This time, instead of straight horizontal, we've got a cart rolling down a frictionless ramp with constant acceleration. Remember that this constant acceleration is a key for these kinematic equations. The cart starts from rest and 3.2 seconds later is traveling two meters per second. Awesome. All right, so again, uh, one of the things I want you to recognize is what are the keys here that are causing us to think about this could be a kinematics equation, right? One is just the types of information they're giving us, right? They're giving us time. They're giving us, they're saying specifically constant acceleration, uh, rest, speeds, right? Those types of things are things that are going to say, yeah, this is what we're looking for. This is a kinematics type question. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can write down the information that we have. Right, we do, uh, I, I like to draw a picture. So I've got a cart at the top of the ramp and it does say it starts from rest. So that means, means my initial velocity is zero. Again, recognize just like in the last video, I know in the equation it's VXO, uh, but all of these, all of my motion here, I already know is gonna either be up or down the ramp. I'm not gonna go uh, I'm not going to leave the ramp and it's not going to go into the ramp. Everything is going to be up and down the ramp. So I already know everything's in the same dimension, forwards and backwards, all right? So uh, initial velocity I'm going to put as zero, okay? It does say that there's constant acceleration, which makes it okay to use the kinematics. The car starts from rest 3.2 seconds later, so we're looking at after time. Well, let me go back to my black. After time. 3.2 seconds, so this point right here is 3.2 seconds later, and it's now traveling at 2 meters per second, so at this point it's going 2 meters per second, so we're going to call that, the time is from, this is then my initial point, and this is then my final point, that's how I'm defining it, so uh, my final velocity is 2 meters per second. Now, is there anything else that I have, right? Remember I have position, initial position, and acceleration. I don't know what the acceleration is. It would sure be nice if I had something else though. Um, I do know, let's see, in part A, it asked me to find the acceleration of the cart. So I do know I'm looking for A. All right, now the other thing of course is I could go ahead and say, well, if this is my initial position, let me label this as X naught, and I'm gonna just call that zero. I already said that going down the ramp was the positive direction. So this up here can be zero, and then this down here can be my final position, whatever that is. And so I'm gonna go ahead and label X naught, or the initial position as zero meters. All right, now if you'll look at the things that I have and then look at the equations, I should be able to choose which equation is going to be helpful here. Recognize that I don't know the final distance, the final displacement. So I really don't want to use an equation that has final displacement in it if I don't have to, right? You'll notice this one right here has a final position this one right here also has final position. If I can avoid those, I will. So I'm gonna try to go for this equation right here, and lo and behold, that is going to be one that I have all the information for, right? I've got the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. The final velocity was two meters per second, the initial velocity was zero meters per second. The acceleration is what I'm looking for. And then the time is 3.2 seconds. So you'll notice I should be able to solve that. I'm going to subtract the zero over, giving me two meters per second. Those units are the same, so I can add and subtract them. It's just like like terms from Algebra 1. You can only add and subtract them if they're the same thing. Now I'm going to divide by 3.2. And when I do 2 divided by 3.2, that's going to give me my final answer, which is that the acceleration e equals 0 0.625. Notice that if I take meter second and divide by another second, that's going to give me meters per second squared, just like I expect. 
So again, as long as I'm in meters and seconds and, and all of those basic SI units, my answer should end up being exactly the way that I want it to be. It should give me the correct units for whatever it is I'm looking for. Now, the acceleration is down the hill, but we called down the hill positive earlier. All right. Now, uh, in the previous video, I started introducing you to the idea of significant figures. Notice that in the problem, this guy has two significant figures, this guy has two significant figures. All the other numbers I came up with myself, right? The zero is a zero. That could have an infinite number of figures there. So my final answer really should have just two significant figures. So I'm gonna write it as 0 0.63 meters per second squared. And that is question letter A. Okay, letter B says, determine how long it will take for the cart to reach the end of a five meter long ramp. So what that means is they're giving me another piece of information here, right? They're telling me that the final position is five meters. Now, some of this may actually change now, right? This may mean that it's not going 3.2 seconds anymore. In fact, because I'm solving for time, I'm gonna guess that it's not gonna be 3.2 seconds anymore, which means my final velocity is not two meters per second anymore, right? I'm at a new position, a new final position, which is not here. It's probably gonna be somewhere further down the ramp, all right? So let's write down the information that we have. We can still start at the top. We can still say that my initial speed is zero meters per second. I can still have that initial position of zero meters. The acceleration is constant, which means that the acceleration will stay the same as it was before. Okay, so the acceleration is 0 0.625 meters per second squared. And I know my answer was 0 0.63, but anytime I actually use the number in calculations, I probably want to use the, the more precise number. Otherwise, what ends up happening is I round, so my answer's off a little bit, and then I round again, and my answer's off a little bit more. And by the time I go through three or four steps, I've rounded so many times, my answer is way off from where it should be. So we're going to go ahead and use all the digits there. So I know the initial velocity, I know the initial position, I know the acceleration. The other thing I know, of course, is that the final position is five meters away. All right, so hopefully, and of course what I'm looking for here in letter B is the time. So let's see if we can put all those things together. Position, acceleration, initial velocity, and time. This is it, right here, right? I don't want the last one because that has, uh, the, the last one doesn't have time in it. And I don't want this one because that one requires me to know the final velocity and I don't know how fast it's going at five meters. So that leaves only this guy right here. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's see if we can solve it. So my final position is X, which was five equals the initial position plus the initial velocity. You'll notice a lot of times you're gonna get some zeros in there. It's gonna simplify things a little bit. Plus one half times the acceleration, which was 0 0.625 times the time, which is what we're looking for. Now, I want you to also note, right, that everything going downhill is positive. So my acceleration, that's a downhill, that's positive. My displacement is downhill, that's positive, right? So all of these things are positive because they're downhill. That's why I, what I identified to be positive from the beginning. You do have to be careful if things start changing directions, if they head back the other direction, you know, any of those things, directions matter, and they're gonna matter whether you put positives or negatives into this equation. Okay, so these guys are both zero, so they're gonna be zero, that's gonna go away. So now I should be able to take that five, I'm gonna multiply it by one half, and then, uh, sorry, divide it, divide it by one half. Uh, I, I do know what I'm doing mathematically here. Uh, so I'm gonna go divide it by one half, and then I'm gonna divide it by the 0.625, and that'll give me 16, so 16 equals t squared, which means that t is equal to four seconds. 
Now, technically, if you square root, it should be plus or minus, but I already know that I'm looking at a positive time here because it's after it rolled down. Okay, the negative has a mathematical significance, but it doesn't have a physical significance in this scenario. All right, so we got our time, four seconds. The final question is, how fast will the cart be traveling at the end of the ramp? All right, so again, this is a five meter long ramp, so we're at the end of the ramp. So all of the information we had in B is now going to carry over, plus the fact that we have time equals four seconds. So all of these things are now gonna come into C. Remember, between A and B, it changed because we changed from this point to the very end of the ramp, which was five meters away. So we had to rewrite some of those initial and final components. In this situation, this is still the end of the ramp, which is the same as it was there, the end of the five meter long ramp. So all the information will be the same. So all we need is to find the final velocity. Again, you can use whichever form you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use this first guy just because it tends to look the easiest. So I'm gonna go final velocity is equal to the initial velocity, which was zero meters per second, plus the acceleration, which was 0 0.625 meters per second squared, times the time, which we just found was four seconds. Now, if we take the four and we multiply by 0 0.0625, we get our final answer, which is velocity equals 2.5 meters per second. Ta-da! How about that? We got our final answer, and that's our final speed at the end of the ramp. Okay, so uh, that's this example. Let's do another. Watch the next one.